Hello YouTube! This is Dr. Rachel Langley from Pine Ridge Family Medicine. Have I got a special treat for everyone out there. Today we're talking about poop. Everyone's favorite. We're talking about medications that are used to treat constipation. Which ones of them work? Which ones of them I would recommend in different situations? Which of them cause bad side effects? Let's get right into it. So first of all, in case you've never heard of it, there's this thing called the Bristol school, stool chart. Not school, but stool. So that's talking about your poop. And it gives you an idea with pictures of what your stool should look like to be ideal and healthy. This is a surprise to a lot of people that, that there's actually a chart that details this kind of thing and that doctors study this kind of thing. Uh, but also what the what the pictures actually look like, what is considered healthy. So you don't want the separate little rabbit pellets, the separate hard lumps. That's not ideal. That's pretty bad constipation. You don't even want it to really be smooth looking on the outside, kind of like a bunch of those balls were all glued together. That's still considered constipation. Ideally, when you have a bowel movement, it should look like a sausage shape, maybe with cracks in the surface. That's okay. Maybe it looks a little fluffy on the outside or a little bit smooth, like soft serve. Sorry to put that image into your mind, but, but that's a healthy and normal thing to have. Most people will have a bowel movement every day, sometimes even multiple times a day, and that's a healthy and normal thing to have. Now, on the other side, you don't want it to be just soft blobs that just kind of ooze out everywhere or a mushy consistency with ragged edges is what they describe mild diarrhea or definitely not not just liquid with no solid pieces all of those are, uh, are are not so great so what do you do to make your stool come out more comfortably less constipation and sometimes even less diarrhea how how do you manage that it's an issue lots of people have, uh, especially with our American diets. We tend to not eat enough fiber and also not get in enough water. So that's the first thing to try. So we have it. I don't know if you can quite read the sign behind me. I tried to make it real clear, but I'll also post a picture of it so you can follow along at home as I go through this list. Um, but the, the first thing to try is try to add more fiber to your food. It, and that can help with diarrhea as well as constipation. I know it doesn't always really intuitively makes sense that adding more bulk to your diet should help you with constipation because it seems like, well, isn't that bulky enough? So the idea is that when you eat something, there's most of it, a lot of it you get and you internalize, you absorb, it goes out into your blood, you go out and feed your fingers and toes and all your muscles and organs with it. And then there's some that your body can't use that continues all the way down out the other end. And it's actually good to have a, a certain amount coming out the other end. They've found that people with higher fiber diets have less incidences of colon cancer um, because maybe because it scrapes away a little bit some of that of the intestinal lining. Your intestinal lining is a lot like the skin on your uh, that outside. So it's kind of that that fiber is kind of an exfoliative, if you will for your intestinal tract that might help scrape away cells that might turn into cancer. That's just my own theory, but they have found that fiber is helpful for that. So what foods have fiber? So wheat bran, uh, bran in general means uh, something that's fibrous that passes through the other way. So if you add some bran to something else you're cooking, that can be a good source. Beans are a classic source of a lot of good fiber um, and whole wheat, anything whole wheat, pasta, whole wheat bread. Be careful with whole grain. They like to trip you up with whole grain. Whole grain means that they added some whole grain and probably a lot of white flour still too. And that white flour is what they took plain old wheat flour and took out a lot of that bran, a lot of that fiber that's actually good for you because it tastes lighter, fluffier, and tastier when it's just white flour. But unfortunately it's not good for your health, but it also tastes really good. So pros and cons, save it as a special treat. Um, and also just fruit and vegetables have a lot of fiber, especially if you leave the skins on. Any fruit or vegetable that kind of has a, a grit to it, like pears, like think of, imagine biting into a pear, you taste that grittiness. That's actually a lot of good fiber that your body needs to pass out the other way to give some bulk to your stool to, so that no matter whether you have problems with diarrhea or more problems with constipation, it gives your body something to mush along that intestine along with whatever else is in there. Um, to help it pass out better. Uh, you are 
the role of your large intestine, the last thing that your poop goes through before it goes out, its entire job is to reabsorb water. Your body is trying to hold on to a lot of water. Makes sense, especially in our dry climate. But the problem is, is that if there's not that much water to begin with, it's going to reabsorb it all and it's going to come out really hard and hard to push out. So the more water you drink, the more it'll have left over, even after it absorbs a lot of water, that large intestine, so that it can pass out more comfortably and smoothly. So that's why the, the two first things to try for having problems with constipation are increasing the fiber in your diet and getting more water. Okay, so you've got tons of fiber in your diet, you're drinking tons of water, or at least you're doing your best, and you're still having problems, or maybe you're just have, at a time in life where you weren't eating perfectly and you need to get things going. What can you do? There's lots of options over the counter. How do you choose one? So they, I, they've kind of been sifted down into four big categories here. We've got bulk, osmotic, softeners, and stimulants. Bulk is similar to adding uh, bran and fiber to your diet. It's kind of an added thing that you can take on top of that that adds even more fiber to your diet. Osmotic means it pulls water into your large intestine at that latter step so you don't lose quite as much so that it'll pass out more easily because of that water. Softeners are kind of their own unique category. Uh, they, they just kind of make this, they mix in with the stool like a, with like an oily substance is kind of what it seems like so that it just passes out more smoothly. And then the stimulants actually work on your intestines to move that food along faster. So instead of its usual foom, 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 moving the muscle contractions, the peristalsis down the intestines, uh, it stimulates that to happen more fast, more quickly. So things move along faster, it moves out and clears out your intestines faster. But it tends to be really crampy and uncomfortable. I mean, that's what stomach cramps are when you have them all throughout your stomach, is those that peristalsis muscle action. So we'll start there. So uh, some common stimulants that you might see over the counter, the uh, the generic name would be bisacodyl or senna, especially senna kind of gets a rap for being a natural one that's better for you as a result because it's natural, but they tend to cause a lot of cramps. They're also sometimes called docolax, xlax, uh, maybe you've heard of those brand names before. Their big side effects tends to be abdominal pain and cramping, and sometimes they work so much that you get diarrhea instead of just getting relief from your constipation. So they're not my favorite, but there's definitely a role for them. Um, another favorite of mine, though, is the stool softener here, docusate sodium or colase. I like it because it comes in a tablet form, which a lot of these don't come as their uh, liquid that you drink or something like that. And it's something that I especially recommend to pregnant women because they're classically pregnant women have a lot of constipation and any women who are on iron supplements. Iron supplements tend to cause a lot of constipation and taking a colase every time you take um, an iron supplement can help things come out more smoothly. Also, if you're on narcotics for any reason, having a, an operation, for example, those tend to make you really constipated and that can just make your pain all that much worse. If you weren't having pain before from your surgery, then after you get constipated after being on days of narcotics, you might get there. So that's another, you just pop a docusate sodium or a colase every time you take one of your pain pills after a surgery and that can help avoid that problem. As you can see, there's a lot of different kinds of osmotics. Um, the sorbitol is one of my favorites. If you've ever seen, there's a sugar-free gummy bears sold on Amazon that have some of the funniest reviews on Amazon. Uh, so if you need a laugh, go check out sorbitol gummy bears. Um, if you don't realize that there's sorbitol instead of regular sugar in them, it's an artificial sweetener. And it absorbs water on the other side of your intestines and helps you go to the bathroom more easily. Um, so people that didn't realize that about the gummy bears that they purchased and ate the whole bag left quite an impact, quite a, a, an experience for them apparently, according to these Amazon reviews. So you can use that to your benefit. You can look purposefully for sugar-free uh, candies or gummy bears that have sorbitol and that can bring you some relief if you're feeling stopped up. Um, then there's classics that are used for uh, colonoscopy preparations. So right before you have a colonoscopy, you want to get all the stool out of your intestines so they can have a good look. And so often they'll give things like magnesium citrate, which is a big bottle you have to drink. It's kind of hard to drink at all, but you have to to get a good prep to make your colonoscopy worth it. 
or uh, Suprep is kind of a combination of magnesium and sodium, um, different compounds that help you to go to the bathroom and empty things out. Not a pleasant experience, but at least that's the worst part of the colonoscopy, and it's over pretty fast within a day. Um, then there's Fleet's enemas. So those are medications that are given the other way. So an enema is introducing fluid up the other way up your intestine um, in order to help clean things out. So some people swear by those. Uh, it's definitely effective. Um, I like phosphosoda sometimes because that's another one that comes as a tablet. It can just be hard to drink enough fluid to clean yourself out. But if you're in just feeling absolutely miserable and so full of stool and stopped up, um, then buying something like magnesium citrate over the counter, following the directions on the back of the bottle, and being able to clean yourself out in one night is sometimes what you need. Then there's things like milk of magnesia, uh, also called magnesium hydroxide, or Miralax, which is polyethylene glycol. They also work in the same way. Uh, they're very commonly used and can be very helpful for those symptoms. That's something that you could take more regularly uh, than, say, magnesium citrate, just to keep things more regular. And finally, at the top of our list, we have the bulk uh, adding to your stool. So these are things that you could even more be comfortable with taking every single day. Just like you'd be comfortable eating a bowl of oatmeal, which has plenty of fiber every single day, uh, you could do the same with most of these. So methyl cellulose, also called citrusel, maybe you've heard of that. Psyllium, which is metamucil. Uh, calcium polycarbophil, which is fibercon. Um, those are ones that you typically add to a juice or water or something, stir it around, chug it, and if you do it every day, it'll help keep you more regular than perhaps you were before. So hopefully that's a good little summary of your options, and if you're feeling stopped up, you can pick a good one for you. I will be posting uh, a link to the Bristol Stool Scale, which you can see right there. There you go. And be sure to check out some of our other educational videos. Stay regular.